What would you do if you were trapped inside a digital circus? It's a trap! Would you go completely insane? Or would you fight to find a way out? Don't worry, my friend. In this video, we'll tell you all the ways to escape. So get ready, because this is very valuable information. We still don't know exactly what the digital circus is. If it's a digital prison, just a virtual reality game or something worse. So, we'll provide a solution for each scenario. From the moment Pony arrives in this world, the first thing that comes to mind is that it's just a dream. This is a dream! And I should just play along until I wake up! But this would be the easiest way to solve this, since you'd practically just have to wake up. But in fact, this is more than a dream. Because if we compare, dreams usually have several details that make them unreal. For example, illogical things happen, characters can fly, or they have some strange power. You might think that the digital circus share some of these things, like jacks making things appear out of nowhere and also disappear them like magic, or Kane being able to fly. But the real reason why this isn't a dream is that characters simply forget who they are. Oh god! Why can't I remember my name? In dreams, this almost never happens. Besides, Jax himself assures us that the digital circus is not a dream at all. <laughs> she still thinks this is a dream. Moreover, considering everything Ponmi experienced in this world, I am 100% sure she would have woken up already. Just like when we wake up from nightmares right before we are about to be hurt or attacked by something. As I told you, this way would be too easy. So let's move on to a slightly more complicated solution. Various details in the digital circus suggest that this world might be more of a retro video game, like those from the 90s. From the beginning of the show, we see how the entire space is pixelated, just like these retro video games were back in the day. You know, all the consoles, Game Boys and ancient computers. Even the colors and characters design reminds us of those retro times. And how did we reach this conclusion? If you have detective instincts and went to this link show on the screen during the episode, you may have noticed it's like a commercial promoting the video game. And you can't deny that this style is very 90s. Even the digital circus menu reminds us a lot of this type of logos. Besides, the video is on a quite old computer. Another thing that makes us think this is when Parmi arrives at the digital circus, a pot falls and glitches, just like 90s games used to. Surely this is more than a simple reference. So, we've ruled out the idea that this could be a dream. Also, after arriving, Ponmi wonders how to take off the helmet. So, after analyzing these details and the game commercial, everything points to the digital circus being a game. Now, how do we escape from here? The answer is too simple and very intuitive. Ponmi just has to finish the game. Complete each and every adventure and mission assigned by Kane. It's not the first time we've seen this kind of plot. Many movies have dealt with it, and in all of them, the game has to be completed. Probably after being completed, she'll simply return to the real world, and finally, she can take off the mentioned helmet. And now, things start to get more complicated and even impossible. Following the same idea that the digital circus is a game, we could think that the characters inside this world are human consciousness trapped in the characters. If this were the case, the way to escape becomes a bit more complex. Firstly, people's minds forget everything about them, even their own names, which can drive them crazy. But maybe not all is lost. We know what happened to Kafumo. Everyone thinks he went crazy by obsessing over a supposed exit. But what if this is the way to break free from the game? By detaching consciousness, it simply disconnects from the game and returns to the real world. Possibly, this is why Kafumo changed form. One theory suggests that each avatar is according to the assigned consciousness, and Kafumo, no longer having human consciousness, simply transforms into a formless being. And, of course, without consciousness. 
but whether they are human consciousness or not, this is not the only way to escape from the digital circus. Let's continue with the idea that it's a game that keeps them trapped, like a digital prison. As we know, every video game, website, video, etc. has to be stored somewhere in the vast world of the Internet, and for that, there are servers and databases. In the digital circus, they play all the time, suggesting they are connected to a network. That's the key, and the other part is a bit complicated. Their goal would be to find a way to send a kind of message to the servers and thus alert the developers that they need help. Another theory tells us that all the characters trapped in the digital circus were actually workers helping complete the game. If someone receives the help message, all they have to do is wait for something to be done. And if not, they are lost. That sounds quite scary. Or what do you think? And do you know what the only good thing about being trapped in a video game is? Games also have their vulnerabilities in their programming. So the other thing they could try is to glitch the game, using all the characters that went crazy. And with this, two things could happen. One, the game breaks and restarts completely. Or someone restarts it and makes code adjustments from the real world. But with this, would they be saved? No. After this, the fate of each character would have two endings. First, they return completely safe and sound to their bodies. Or second, they die and disappear forever. So practically this would be a suicidal plan, because no one is sure what would happen to their lives. Another alternative that makes a lot of sense has to do with another theory. It mentions that Kinger is actually one of the most important developers and was the one working on the programming of the Digital Circus. Several of his colleagues ended up trapped in this game, but he managed to create an artificial intelligence that would keep them sane until he found a solution to bring them back to the real world. And this AI is Kane. Now, if this were true, Kinger would have enough knowledge to teach Kane to create things outside his code. Because if we think about it, Kane works simply with programmed orders, and Kinger, being the creator, knows perfectly how this AI works. Besides, Kane himself said that he has control over the entire digital world. So, in one of these attempts to create something, there could be a gap that leads to the exit. All they would have to do is know how to give orders to Kane. Something like the new and famous prompt engineering of the new artificial intelligence chats. And finally, the worst thing that could happen to the characters is being trapped without any way out. This conclusion sounds very crazy, but it's a possibility, since Ponmi, in her attempts to find the exit, realizes that all the doors she crosses lead to nowhere. There's no real exit. So, if this is the case, all they can do is wait for one of the developers to rescue them. And if they don't, they are trapped forever and forgotten. And these were all the ways to escape from the digital circus. Leave a comment if you have any other idea.